In this video, we're going to talk about internal carotid artery occlusions intracranially as a cause of acute ischemic stroke and how to recognize an ICA occlusion on a CT angiogram. So we have our source images. We have our thick MIP reconstructions in the axial and coronal planes. If we look at our source images, right away we can see uh, there's significant asymmetry in this patient presenting with an acute stroke with right hemiparesis, aphasia, and left gaze deviation. Once again, we can see radiographically the left gaze deviation, uh, looking at the orbital portion of the source images. And looking at the uh, internal carotid artery on the normal right side, here is where the, the normal appearance. We see the, the carotid coming up in the siphon, then up to the uh, above the skull base, to the carotid terminus, into the middle cerebral artery. And then we look on the opposite side, and we do not see any significant contrast to pacification or filling of that internal carotid artery at the skull base or just above it. We don't really see the terminus. We see a little bit of contrast filling in the anterior cerebral arteries here, uh, very little to speak of, uh, just a small amount of contrast in the middle cerebral artery, a little bit more distally from that clot. And now if we look at the axial thick MIP reconstructions, we see a similar picture but better visualized. Uh, again, we see the normal carotid here, no filling of this carotid, uh, which appears to be a clot at the carotid terminus with some uh, reconstitution by collateralization down to the level close to the clot in the middle cerebral artery, but very thready uh, contrast to pacification in the MCA territory. And that, that uh, small degree of uh, collateral uh, filling or uh, some degree of contrast making it past the clot into uh, the uh, anterior cerebral arteries on both sides as there's no obvious uh, A1 or initial segment of the anterior cerebral artery on the right side, on the unaffected side. Same thing, same uh, picture that we see here uh, on the coronal reconstructions. If we look down uh, at the skull base, we see the normal right internal carotid artery making its way through the skull base up to uh, its terminus here, and we do not see any contrast of pacification, just an empty uh, bony canal. So one of the things that uh, we need to address now, is, as with any intracranial occlusion, is to look in the neck and determine, uh, is uh, in this case, is this an occlusion of the carotid artery at its terminus intracranially, or is this an internal carotid artery occlusion uh, at its origin in the neck? These are two very different things with uh, uh, very important implications for potential uh, treatment uh, from the endovascular stroke treatment standpoint. So if we look at the anatomy by way of review uh, and look at the uh, course of the internal carotid artery, you have the bifurcation in the neck from the common carotid artery, the external here showing uh, with its branch points uh, soon after the initial origin of the external. The internal carotid artery, once it's uh, formed at the bifurcation, has a straight uh, course or, or direct course without branching. Uh, all the way up to the skull base. Just beyond the skull base are the first opportunities for uh, the blood to flow out uh, at a branch point. You have the ophthalmic artery that comes off here. You have, if there is a, a posterior communi communicating artery, a PECOM present, it's going to be here. So just below the terminus is the first point where you have uh, any potential for uh, collateral channels to be present. If there's a clot that covers all of those uh, potential channels here, a large carotid terminus clot, there's really no way, nowhere for the blood to go uh, in the internal carotid artery, so you're not going to have very much filling in the neck. But it's going to have most often a, a, a typical appearance that we'll see on this patient's CAT scan angiogram that distinguishes it from an atherosclerotic occlusion of the internal carotid artery right here at its origin. So we'll bring up our CAT scan uh, angiogram portion down in the uh, the neck reconstructions and and get a view of what's going on in our in our patient's uh, situation here. So now we're looking down in the neck portion of the same patient's CT angiogram. And this is a thick MIP reconstruction uh, through the left internal carotid artery's uh, origin in the neck. And so once again, to review the anatomy, we're looking at the common carotid artery and the carotid bifurcation in the neck. So that corresponds on the diagram here, common carotid artery, the bifurcation into the branching external here and the non-branching internal carotid artery uh, at, at, all the way up through the skull base. So similar picture here, common, you can see coming down from the bottom of the screen, and then the external, right away you see those multiple branch points, so you can recognize your external, and then you see the non-branching internal carotid artery, 
There is a, an atherosclerotic plaque with some calcification at the origin of the internal, as is a, a common location, but uh, the, the degree of stenosis is uh, well less than uh, 50%, although it's hard to measure the artery distally because essentially what you see is a slow uh, failure of the contrast to make it up into that artery. There's no hard cutoff. It does not appear that there is an acute occlusion uh, from a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque at the origin, but instead there is a clot downstream, in this case of the carotid terminus, that's preventing the egress of blood out uh, to be able to allow contrast to fully opacify this artery. So it looks like there's a tapered narrowing to the vessel, but that's not actually the anatomy of the vessel. That's a functional consequence of the carotid terminus occlusion. So this is often referred to as a, a functional uh, internal carotid artery occlusion from, from the perspective of the cervical portion, the neck portion of the internal carotid artery. But in fact, it's an intracranial uh, carotid artery occlusion uh, distally at, at or near the terminus, and uh, it's causing a failure of the contrast to make it out. The longer you wait to do your scan, the more contrast opacification you would see. Uh, if you have a, a delayed post-contrast image, you'll see hang up of contrast and more contrast op opacification simply by the passage of time uh, into that uh, artery. And that would be a way of confirming on CT angiography that in fact this is a, uh, an occlusion intracranially at the terminus, not a cervical uh, internal carotid artery occlusion at its origin. And here we see the patient's catheter angiogram performed for endovascular stroke treatment. And this will illustrate uh, that in fact this is a carotid terminus occlusion, not an occlusion in the neck. Here we have the intracranial views of the common carotid injection. So catheter in the common carotid artery in the neck. We're taking uh, a uh, x-ray movie here of uh, the patient's skull. You can see the subtracted skull here, the orbits, uh, the top of the head here in the AP or forward view, straight ahead, uh, and then the lateral or side view here. Here's the skull base uh, of the patient and, and the orbit here. And this is, again, injecting dye into the common carotid, and so we're opacifying, in, in the normal situation, both the external and the internal carotid artery. But what you're going to see here, as we move forward in time, we only see uh, branches of the external carotid artery supplying these scalp branches here and branches to uh, the, the face. Uh, and it's very hard to see any flow straight into the brain through the internal carotid artery. If we follow it out farther in time as the contrast is making it farther down the line in the scalp branches, we start to see this shadow here that is the internal carotid artery. So this contrast is very slowly making it up towards the site of that occlusion uh, through some side channels, perhaps through uh, an ophthalmic artery that's not covered by the clot, uh, allowing some slow passage of contrast with sufficient time. Same thing in the side view contrast opacification of the scalp branches. So far we don't see any clear internal carotid artery, but now we start to see slow passage of contrast opacified blood into the internal carotid artery up to or close to the point of the clot at the carotid terminus.